Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. This video is going to be a tutorial on how to make pop art panels in Photoshop. More or less, it's the same one we covered in class together. But if you need a refresher on all the steps, then uh, I highly suggest taking a look at this video on your free time. So with that being said, let's get started. Um, first things first, I'm just going to open up a photo. I saved it here. I'm going to open up Bowser Wowser. Bowser Wowser. Uh, so just open it up. First step, we're gonna desaturate our image, right? So shortcut for that is Command Shift U. We got a nice uh, black and white image here now, good. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is, actually before we crop it, um, let's take a look at our histogram. For me, it's kind of saved right here on the right. Uh, again, if you don't remember where your histogram is or any tool for that matter, remember you can always go up to the top right and just search it. So right, if you couldn't find histogram, just type histogram, right? And there you go, there's the panel. So mine's already out, I'm not gonna need it. So we have some activity to the far left, to the far right, uh, but I'm gonna raise my exposure in my highlights as you know, maybe a little bit more. Uh, remember, we do darken up our image quite a bit after all, uh, all the filters um, the, that we apply to it. So instead of applying layers here in the panel i'm just going to actually open up bozer wozer in uh in um in our camera raw filter right so once i open up camera raw it brings up the screen and all of a sudden it looks like lightroom right for those of you who are, are, are more favorable for using lightroom um so maybe i'll raise my exposure about half a stop right so i'll raise a half a stop um, I'm actually going to lower my contrast a little. Remember, if we raise our contrast, things kind of get a little burnt. Um, it's going to get burnt regardless, so let's save it a little bit of uh, char, I guess. Um, so I'm going to go to 35, minus 35 that is. Um, and then maybe highlights, I'm going to raise it a little bit. I know the floor in this photo is pretty hot, so if I raise it too much, it might, it might make it just, you know, blazing, um, blinding, I mean. So maybe there, shadows. Let's raise the shadows a little bit too. Um, whites, I think we can cool it down a little bit. And then the black, blacks a little bit, there we go. Okay, so I think that's a little better. Um, I'm not gonna touch any of the, the presence um, sliders, but there we go, I'm gonna hit okay. Okay, so we raised it a little bit, right? We see our histogram now. You can kind of see the activity moving away from the shadows area, so that's good. We're good to go. Next step, uh, we're going to crop. So crop, and then we're going to make a square one by one. Remember, we just have to go up to our options bar. No matter what tool we're on, the options bar controls the settings for that individual tool. So um, just go up here when you have to, maybe here. Let's go with that. All right, now that we've cropped Bozer Wozer to something we like compositionally, we're going to draw a mask around him. We're gonna create a mask, selection mask. Um, typically, I think in class, we've, we've really just used two. We've used either the quick selection tool or the lasso, the magnetic one, um, right? Which, you know, obviously nothing wrong with that. Very quick and easy, right? You can just keep going. Um, but, you know, again, the lasso, if you need a reminder, is the one that you can create points. Um, but we're not going to do that today. What we're really going to use is actually the pencil tool. So if you don't see it on your toolbar, um, it's hidden under the, uh, the brush tool. So we just open it up. Um, remember, hold down on it or hold alt click, I think, or option click, I'm sorry. And then it'll bring up, you know, the hidden, the hidden tools. So I'm going to choose my pencil. Um, and make sure your swatches are black and white before you actually draw or, or draw your mask around him. We're going to hit Q and you should notice over here in your layers panel that your Bozer Wozer background layer, uh, is now highlighted in red. That's exactly what we want. Now that we got our tool set up, I'm ready to draw, uh, 40, maybe a little big, let me go up to my options bar and maybe take it down to 25. Yeah, that's about right. 
So I got 25 now. Here we go. And you can see that I've missed some, some spots up here, right? Uh, don't worry about it. We just want to have a mask. The rough aesthetic we're going to get is actually kind of beneficial to what we're going for. Now that you have a completed mask, you want to go to our paint bucket. We're just going to fill in our dog, right? So if you didn't have a, if you had a gap in your mask, the whole image would be covered in red. So make sure it's, uh, it's, um, it's connected. So now that you have this done, hit Q. Good. So we have a mask, right? Bozer Bozer's got a mask. So to turn our background white, we're going to hit command delete and boom, right? There we go. So you'll notice, um, again, if you used a really, really thick, uh, brush size, you might have maybe too much here, but for what we've got right now, um, and it's, this is, you know, your judgment, but what we got here now probably will do, it'll create this kind of, um, collage effect, right? You know, when you're like, you're asked in art class to like cut up magazines and make a, uh, you know, like a collage. Um, I'm not sure if anyone had to do that as a kid, but command D now press command D to deselect the mask. There we go. Okay. So after deselecting Bozer Wozer, we're going to go to our layers panel. We're going to duplicate our layer and I'll name this one Bozer Wozer. Okay, cool. So we got two Bozer Wozers. We're looking good. Make sure you have our newly duplicated layers selected, um, not background. Make sure the top one is selected. And we're going to go up to filter. And we're going to go up to filter gallery. And in sketch, right, there's a lot of folders here. We're going to go to sketch. And then we're going to go to halftone pattern. Now, let's see this. Right, so it kind of gives you a preview here. Uh, the settings here, it's again, it depends on your image. Everyone's image is going to differ a little bit. The bigger your size, you're going to have, uh, you know, a more prominent dot grid. Uh, and the more you have, the larger your size, again, it's going to kind of char up the image. It's going to make it more contrasty. It's going to make it more dark, which may not be what you want. Again, depending on your image, if you have an image that has a lot of um, shadows and blacks in your image, then you probably want to avoid going too big. I would suggest maybe for a minimum, uh, a minimum size of four. Um, but again, this really depends on your image. Uh, contrast, same thing. If you have a lot of blacks or shadows, maybe uh, chill out on the contrast. If you don't, maybe you can raise it up a lot. Um, again, right now it doesn't look bad, but once we apply the burn mode, um, not burn mode, sorry, the multiply mode or the burn mode, depending what you want to use, you're going to get a lot more contrast than you, than you initially um, anticipated. So I'm just going to hit okay. Now that I have my settings, make sure we're still select our, our, our um, top layer. Our Bozer Wozer is selected. I'm going to go up to filter. I'm going to go to sharpen, go to smart sharpen. And then these are the settings I have. Again, you play with what you think is appropriate for yours, but I think these will work for most, uh, most everyone. Um, and again, we're only applying this to the top layer. So there we go. Cool. So this is one of the most important parts uh, here. It's something that everyone kind of forgets to apply. And if you don't apply it, you're not going to be able to, uh, you know, paint your, your panel, so to speak. So, Make sure the Bozer Wozer, the top layer is selected. Um, and I'm gonna select the multiply. This is the mode, the blend mode we're gonna use. We can use a different one later, but uh, for the time being, I'm just gonna use multiply. And once we select it, you already notice that it is a lot more you know, charred up, burnt up than we actually anticipated. It's a lot darker, but I still think we have enough to work with um, in terms of painting. Um, okay, so I'm gonna close that. So once we're ready, once we're ready to paint, we're going to create a new layer and we're going to sandwich it right between the two pups. This layer right here, the, the newly created layer, that's the one you're going to paint. Okay. So you don't want to paint either of the original pups. Uh, if you do, 
every time you want to make a new uh, color scheme, a new panel, you're going to have to redo uh, all the steps up until this point. Uh, by only painting layer one or the new layer inserted between the pups, um, you really save yourself, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes probably. So uh, we're just gonna paint the new layer. So, okay, so we're ready to paint, um, but what colors do we choose? Well, we wanna go for a triadic color scheme. So if you're not too familiar with the color wheels uh, that we've covered in class, uh, just go to canvas. Remember, everything's on canvas. Um, and let's say, let's say, let's see this. Let's start with orange. Let's pick orange first. And so I'm going to go to my color swatches here, double click, and let's just pick a nice, you know, kind of jumpsuit orange, I guess. Um, Arrested Development Orange, if anyone watches that show. To save us a little bit of time, I can hit Option Delete and that will paint the entire uh, canvas for us or the entire panel for us. So we have orange, cool. Let's look back to our color wheel, right? So we're going for a triadic color scheme. So we have our orange, maybe we'll do orange, you know, purple, and then maybe like a, not a kiwi green, but like maybe, you know, like a good old aged kiwi green. So we got orange here, you know, a little bright purple and then you know, a good healthy kiwi green here. So, okay. Let's go back to our color swatches. I'm gonna switch and go change out our white ones. So like a good purple, maybe, uh, maybe around, around that, okay. And to paint, we're not gonna paint bucket or, or option delete this time. We're gonna go to our pencil tool and find our brush tool beneath it. And let me, make it a little larger because I have some real estate to cover, right? So maybe, okay, that's good enough. So once I have that ready, I'm just gonna paint over our Bozer Wozer, right? So there he is. So take a look at our puppy's, uh, his little harness, right? We paint it, nothing happens. Even if it was a brighter uh, color like orange, nothing happens to it. So again, just keep in mind when you're deciding on what your your subject is wearing or maybe their hair color or any detail like that, anything that is very dark or just very heavy in shadows will not be able to uh, you know, get painted, um, which is okay, just consider uh, you need some sort of highlights or whites in the, the image that you can paint to, to give it a, a good color scheme. Um, okay, so so we gave it the, the you know jumpsuit orange, kind of this purple here, and then now let's go for a green. Maybe, maybe a little maybe a little darker. Yeah, maybe there. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. If you are using a mouse and keyboard, um, if you hold down option and you use the scroll, the track wheel, you can zoom in and out and then you can hold space bar and click and drag. Um, all right, so let's paint his tongue green. Okay, so let's actually go to white now. I'm gonna you know, give him a little dental treatment, I guess. Uh, okay. All right, so that looks okay to me. Now remember, if we look back to our layers panel, this middle one is the one we're actually painting. Okay, so again, don't paint the, the two layers that we've started off with, the, the top Bozer Wozer and the background layer, right? So I, I, honestly, I could, you know, turn off the visibility and this is what we, uh, this is what we get. It's kind of cool in itself. But um, remember, these are the ones you're painting, right? I can toggle it on and off. And when you want to make a new, panel with the new color scheme uh, you just have to create a new layer and then turn this one off obviously but then start painting layer two now okay 
So for example, take a look at this pop art project here, right? I have my two subject layers at the top and the bottom, and then I have an assortment of color schemes in the middle. So we got layer two, layer four, layer five, layer three, layer one, a bunch of different color schemes, and it's really whatever you'd like to play with. Um, and when it comes down to it, when you wanna save it, all you have to do, you don't have to flatten anything, you don't have to compress all the files and anything, just make sure whichever ones you want um, to save or publish for a presentation. For example, if, if this color scheme is the one I want, all I have to do is export or save as, uh, you know, a JPEG or a PNG, whatever it may be. All right, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, please keep working on your projects. Remember, you need a total of four panels per subject. So your one subject, whoever it is, whether it's Bozer Wozer or Charles, you need a total of four different panels, each one with a different color scheme. Uh, let's keep things triadic. Uh, if you need help, please refer to the wheel, the color wheel on Canvas. And yeah, so keep working, guys. I'll catch you in class.